So welcome to this uh, short session on earth fault loop impedance. Uh, what is it? Well, one definition might be this, that it's a measurement of a property's power supply to check the earth things adequate and efficient. We basically want to know that the earth is actually earthed and is working properly. Uh, and we don't know that unless we test for it properly. And currently as heated engineers, most of us don't. Now, let's just take a, a step back and just talk briefly about the things we do do. So one of the first, first things that we may do, or you should do, is check a boiler casing that's not live and we use a voltage detector for that. Um, now if a casing is live, of course, you've got two issues. You've got the issue that there is a live to earth fault. And then of course, you've, the fact that it's still live, if we're testing it and it's still live, is um, that the earthing system isn't working properly. It hasn't allowed the system to automatically disconnect the supply. So there's two issues there. Um, another thing we do is earth continuity. We check continuity between the power supply, which may be a spur or socket, and the boiler itself and various positions within the boiler. This doesn't know, tell us that the earth within the socket or spur is even connected, let alone working properly. So we could have uh, a loose earth, an earth that isn't connected, and we would never know. So if that boiler became live while we worked on it, we would get a, a whack uh, for sure. Now, of course, if it's a socket and not a spur, we could just put a socket tester in it and we would know for sure then that the earth is connected. But even in that case, we don't know the effectiveness of that earth and whether it will disconnect the supply quickly enough so that any shock we get won't be fatal. So the way to do that job properly, to check it properly, is to use a specific bit of kit, something like this. We're going to look at this bit of kit in practice in a minute. But let's just first consider, other than our own safety and the safety of our clients, why should we be doing this? Well, the guidance is in Technical Bulletin 118, Safe Electrical Isolation of Gas Appliances. And it says it's guidance on the safety precautions and safe electrical isolation of gas appliances. It says there it's guidance, but I'll tell you what, it seems much stronger than that to me. Let's have a closer look at note one. And within note one, it says this, it says the health and safety enforcing authorities regard the guidance in this technical bulletin as a best practice requirement and would expect all gas safe registered businesses and engineers to apply the requirements of this technical bulletin. I'd say that's a little bit stronger than just guidance myself. And let's see what it says about earth fault loop impedance testing itself. It says when working on a gas appliance, it's important that the earthing of the power supply to the equipment is adequate and efficient. In customers' premises, this is likely to be unknown. So it's important to carry out a test to demonstrate the effectiveness of the earthing. The safe way to do this is to measure the earth loop impedance of the power supply using an instrument designed for that purpose. And as mentioned earlier, this is such an instrument. So let's have a look at this in practice, see how it works. Here we go. Okay, so here's a device. Uh, we can plug it in if the boiler is plugged into a three pin socket and we can plug our device into the socket. Uh, we can turn the power on and do a normal socket test. Then we can go on and do a loop test. So let's turn it on. So now doing a socket test. So we know we've got our terminals connected and we've got a safe working supply. It will now let us go on to do a loop test. we we'll press the loop button and then we should get a readout at the very top. There we are. Less than one ohm. That means our earth fault loop impedance is satisfactory. We can now go on and do a polarity test. Three green lights still. Polarity is good. So now we know we're safe to continue working. Okay, so in this situation we've got a spur. Um, the recommendations or the instructions in the booklet that accompanies this um, suggest that we test at the spur, i.e. we take the screws out, we lay it down, power off first obviously, um, power up when we're ready, and then test with these probes. Um, my, my recommendation is we don't do that. Um, we're not electricians. Sometimes opening these up can be uh, can be a can of worms, so um, I won't bother. 
if you can avoid doing that, you know, test at the boiler or test at the junction box. Now it's fiddly. And one thing I've got to say is this kit does not come with three test probes like this. It actually comes with a crocodile clip. Well, it's just three crocodile clips, but only a crocodile clip for the earth. Um, because the idea is that when you lay that down, you can just clamp on to the earth and then probe with these. Um, as I say, I don't think that works for us as heating engineers. I think we should be doing it at the appliance or at the junction box. So I bought myself an extra probe. Not ideal, but it's just a couple of extra quid. So let's put the power on. Uh, now it's a bit fiddly with three probes. You have to think about it um, because obviously we've got uh, terminal blocks that are quite close together. With this particular one, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go into the top for the earth there, the bottom neutral, and then top live so I get some spacing. And when they're all on, we get our normal tests. So we've got three green lights, we know we're connected. And now we've got a safe working uh, supply and now we can do a loop test and we get a green light on the loop test we've got less than one ohm we're good to go we can do a polarity test now and the polarity is good we know it's safe to continue working well i hope you found that useful and I'll see you next time.